Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And the more I make sourdough bread, the more I realise success is about two things multiplication of the yeast and building structure. Let's do it. Hey you guys, welcome back to another sourdough video here on the Bake With Jack YouTube channel. I feel like this one is really important, but hey, you know what, let me know underneath if you think it's useful. I feel like it is. Click that thumbs up button, press subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, if this helps you out. I hope it does. So I must admit, I'm quite new to making sourdough. I've been tinkering and having a play for a long time, but only really properly got involved around 18 months ago. And somebody the other day, after having tried some of my sourdough bread, said to me, oh, so what recipe do you use? Is it a variation of the tartine one? And I was like, <laughs> no. But seriously though, I never really follow a sourdough recipe. Yes, I have a selection of sourdough books, but I never really use the recipe. Uh, I just sort of work on principle, and let me explain. There are only really two things that need to happen in order to make your sourdough a success. And to clarify what I mean by success is that it's a loaf that's puffed up and it's baked and it's hold a nice shape. Yes, flavour profiles do change and it's both absolutely fascinating and perfectly fine. But as the loaf puffs up and it's edible and it's wonderful and it bakes and holds a nice shape, you win the game. I'm talking about this, yeah? A loaf of sourdough, and it looks wonderful. It's fine, it's edible. That's all I'm after when I say success. And so to achieve this, you only really need to worry, well, don't, like, don't worry, about two things. One is the multiplication of yeast within your starter and within your dough. And two is building structure along the way in order for your bread dough to become strong and able to hold all the gas and hold a nice shape. That's it, two things, multiplication and structure. But what do you need to do about it? Well, I will tell you. So there are natural yeasts within your starter. We've spoken about this before. Natural yeast inside here. What you need to do is take a little bit of starter and give it a nice feed a little bit of starter and a nice feed. That feed is giving the yeasts more room to multiply, more food to make that possible, and that will happen then over time. Therefore, yeasts multiply, eating up all that food, starter gets really excited, and the result of that is increased volume down to the gas being produced. Then, when the yeasts have multiplied and the starter is at its peak, you give it a new home within your dough. New home, that means more food and more space for the yeasts to multiply and produce gas. It's all about momentum. The only thing you need to do is give it time for that to happen. This part is called fermentation. Yeasts gobbling up all that new food, multiplying and creating more gas, increasing the volume of your dough. Puff. Got that? Let's move on to the next bit. So the second part is structure, okay? The multiplication thing is all very well and good, but without building structure, your dough may well collapse or you might tip it out of the proven basket and it might just turn into a puddle straight away. The dough needs structure and strength to be able to hold all that gas produced by the yeast that you've looked after so well for so long. So you need to stretch and fold the dough at some point during that fermentation period to build the structure. And I'll talk about when uh, in a minute, but for now, about three to four stretch and folds you need along the way to build the structure to build uniformity within the gluten inside of the dough, which is those elastic bands that make it strong, for it to be able to hold all that gas produced by the yeast. Then once you've built the structure, once you've achieved the fermentation, which is down to yeast multiplication that you need, you can then go with the pre-shape and the shape final proof bake. There are tons of ways to do those stretch and folds, and I haven't made a specific video for that. I probably will do in the future, but the principle lies in a video I made a while ago about no knead bread. That's the principle. Have a look at that video if you want to see an idea of stretching and folding. 
And so with those two principles, right, in the process of the sourdough making, I don't really need a recipe and this is what I do, right? I'll look at what I'm doing over the next couple of days. I'll see what I've got on. I might have a day of work on. I'm gonna be out of the house for 10 hours, right? So for example, that 10 hour can be my fermentation multiplication stage, okay? That 10 hours, then I'll decide how much sourdough starter I need for my dough to happily live unattended and neglected for 10 hours and be fine by the end. Also, then I can put the stretch and folds when I need to. If I need to do when I get back, I'll put the stretch and folds there. And this pre-shape and the shape. Then at that point, if I've got time to bake it, I'll bake it, and if I haven't got time to bake it, I'll stash it in the fridge. Once you've got the principle, you can adapt the sourdough making process to you so that it always works and you don't need to follow a very strict timed guideline in a recipe book. Does this make sense? I hope it all makes sense to you and I want I feel like I want to do another video about how to get it into your schedule another time. If you think that's a good idea and you might get some use out of that, stick it underneath because I feel like that's gonna be a bit intense that video to A to make and B to watch and I feel like this one was probably the most complicated one I've done today. It certainly scrambled my brain when I was trying to figure out what I needed to say to you to make it as clear as possible. But I hope that makes sense. Multiplication of the yeast and structure building along the way, whenever you want to fit that in. That's the two processes, that's the two things that happen along the way that are the most important to the success of your sourdough bread. Both of those things need to happen for it to come out okay, with a nice shape and full of air, that's just the name of the game, that's the game, once you've done that, uh, you win the game. Right, cool, listen, thank you very much for hanging out with me today, I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more sourdough resources, there's a few more things here on YouTube. I'm putting content on Instagram all the time, at Bake With Jack, and there's all loads of bits and bobs, articles and recipes and bits and bobs and stuff like that on my website. Sourdough is a thing I've just started to put out recently, so there's a few things on there, the most of it is yeasted but there's some stuff on there, so check it out. And don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't already. Wicked. Thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for another video.